What's the word, y'all? Yesterday, we dropped the video. We were talking about contenders versus pretenders in basketball. And today, I want to do the exact opposite uh, and talk about the contenders for the first overall pick. Because as we continue to go throughout the season, these bottom feeder teams, these tank teams, honestly get talked about less and less every single day because we're starting to think about the Larry O'Brien when they're starting to think about lottery odds. But... I mean, if you watch these bottom feeder teams, these tanking teams, there's a lot to be excited about if you're one of the teams that have committed to the tank. Say we found out that Cade Cunningham is going to be out for the rest of the season, which obviously sucks because Cade is a really good player and a really fun player to watch. But, <laughs> you know, the silver lining is... It's pretty big because right now the Detroit Pistons are a bad basketball team when it comes to wins and losses and th their best player, their franchise cornerstone will not suit up again this season. Now, there's an argument to be made about him not being able to play and how that could potentially set back his individual development. But the bad Pistons fans ain't tripping too much. <laughs> I bet you they're not tripping too much because this just puts them in the better position to potentially get that first overall pick. Actually, I take that back. There, there's no good thing about your franchise player missing the rest of the season, even if that means you might get a top three pick. Because it's not like with Kay Cunningham playing that they were about to go out there and win 30 games or even close to it. K. Cunningham played 12 games this season before his injury. They won three of those 12. Uh, so yeah, they were heading in the direction that we all <laughs> that we all know. They're currently 7 and 22, which puts them at the lowest win percentage in all the basketball, which means that they have the highest odds to potentially get Vic because we know that's who the first overall pick is this year. And you know, there there are some things that you can really look at for the rest of the season if you're a Detroit Piston fan and, and kind of gauge and grade. The first one, of course, being Killian Hayes, uh, because for a long time it felt like. Killian Hayes was about to be one of the biggest busts of biggest busts, but then again, he's like the seventh overall pick, whatever. But it didn't look like he deserved to get NBA minutes. And since Kay Cunningham has been out with his injuries, they've given him basically the, the keys to be the lead ball handler, and he's produced some okay stuff. Scoring at the NBA level has been a problem for Killian Hayes, and though he's not doing anything too spectacular, his shot, his shooting splits are going higher, and if you look at the last month of basketball, he's averaging about 11 points per game on 45% shooting and about 40% from three on about four attempts per. That's really good, because we knew he could defend, we knew he got the vision, but we needed him to be able to shoot and score the basketball, and he's doing that to some extent. And now you try to figure out how much of what he's doing right now is replicatable once Kay Cunningham comes back, and how much of that do you buy into because you already got Jaden Ivey, who we'll talk about in a second, and you're going to have Kay Cunningham. That is your projected backcourt of the future. We don't know what pick you're going to get, but it might end up being a guard, too, which, I mean, you hope not. <laughs> Again, there's the big guy down there. So with what Killian Hayes is doing and his contract coming up soon, you have to figure out what is his price and are we willing to pay that price. But you also are going to see a lot of Jaden Ivey. Um, he's, he's struggled a little bit. Like, of course, when you talk about um, any player in the NBA coming into it from from college they're gonna get a lot of flashes his flashes look really good but then you get the shooting slumps and he's currently in one of those right now you're getting to see isaiah stewart turn into a guy that didn't take didn't take any three-point shots for the first couple years of his career to attempt them i just checked the number a couple days ago but i, I, I want to give you the exact number of threes he's attempted per game with the exact shooting splits he's shooting 36 percent from three on four attempts that's 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 pretty good so, uh, again, there are things to, to look at and be excited about. Boyan Bogdanovich signed an extension, and I do believe that he'll probably get moved again, which uh, Troy Reaver, you, you, depending on what you get, you should get an award for because you only gave up Kelly Olenek and Saban Lee, who got cut for, for Boyan, and he's averaging 20 points per game, always 50, 40, 90. You can flip him, and then you, you're going to get a first-round pick for that type of production. So, shout out to them. Um, I, I'm a... I'm one of those guys that's going to watch a lot of possessions of the Pistons, but it's going to be hard for me to watch a full game of Pistons basketball until next season. I'll be honest with you. Next in the, the Wembenyama sweepstakes is the Charlotte Hornets, currently on a five-game losing streak, 7-20, and 20, and they haven't even sold their pieces just yet. Gordon Hayward might might get trade, uh, traded. He's got two years left on his deal at $30 million each. I just don't know if a team is going to be able or be willing to take that, especially considering his injury history. So he might be there to stay. But Terry Rozier has been playing good basketball. Kelly Oubre is playing the best basketball of his career. So his trade stock is at an all-time high. We don't know about LaMelo. I feel like I haven't heard an update about LaMelo in so very long. Um, so I'm happy this is the direction they're going in as a franchise because I think for Charlotte to become anything more than a playing team in the future, they have to hit on the draft picks, and this gives them an opportunity to. My fault, Hornets fans. I, we gave the Detroit Pistons like five minutes of basketball talk. I ain't got I ain't got a lot to say. Shout out to Kelly Oubre. I'm excited to see what team he can 
end up on or he will end up on kelly Oubre so far this season is having a career year but he's also one of those players this is gonna sound like a shot but it's not i promise you it's not a kelly if somehow you come across this video got, got a lot of respect and love for you my boy um but he is one of those players that if i am a contending team i will be kind of hesitant to trade for because his production is cool but there, there's a lot of moments when I watch him play where I'm like, bro, what are you doing? And sometimes those what are you doing moments end up in buckets, which is dope. But some of those like, oh, we almost shot a three when we were up and we could have just dribbled the ball out. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to Kelly Oubre, but he'll, he'll probably get moved. The Orlando Magic on a three-game win streak, beating the Toronto Raptors, who I wanted to make a video about the Toronto Raptors and their struggles. I'm going to give them one more game before we really dive in because losing two games back-to-back -back against the Orlando Magic, it, it sucks because so far this season, when we talk about these back-to-back -back games in the same city, whatever it may be, you don't get swept off them. And they did to the Orlando Magic, who just haven't been good. Before this win streak, they were the worst team in basketball um <laughs> and yeah so we might make a toronto raptors video but that's something for future me and not right now let's talk about the orlando magic because they took a chance on bowl bowl and so far this season it's been it's been good i guess more recently when paolo becquero came back from his injury the bowl bowl production has gone down but you saw what could be in bowl bowl paolo as a former first overall pick looks ahead above everybody else in the class and so far the class has been really really solid but undoubtedly paolo has looked like the best player because even when he's not shooting the ball efficiently he gets to the free throw line as if he's a seven eight year vet and you don't see that type of thing from a wing player or a, a ball handler in the nba this early and franz after his slow start after fever basketball has put it together and he man against the the toronto raptors in the first game at least he was unstoppable him and palo i think they missed like six total shots the entire game and now markel is coming back there's a there's a lot of good stuff in orlando right now but i wonder if they're going to be a team that's going to try to consolidate some of those younger assets because again there's so many people over there that might be willing or deserving to get minutes and it's not enough minutes to go around so we'll see mobamba should 100 get traded uh, and, it, and the teams I'm thinking about for him to go, it would be like a Raptors in this situation. It would be like a Brooklyn Nets, Denver Nuggets. Feel, I feel like they don't have the assets, but I'm just thinking about teams that could give him an opportunity to at least play basketball, <laughs> play some basketball. When he does play, at least a couple days ago, he was hitting the shots. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like he should undoubtedly get moved. The Houston Rockets, um, we talked about them briefly in yesterday's video. They are 5-5 five and five in their last 10 including some wins against some really good teams they held the bucks to 92 points they beat the 76ers in overtime james harden's return game if i remember correctly they beat the phoenix suns by one they beat the okc thunder and the atlanta hawks so they've had some really solid wins under their belt and i want to talk about this recent game against the milwaukee bucks because it wasn't a pretty one a, a 97 to 92 win for them and in this game jabari smith jr shot one for nine oh for four from three six total points bro he had a good game he had a good game kenny how is that possible usually i just read you the stat line he's six points ten rebounds one for nine he had a good game one of the things people told me about jabari smith jr is that no matter what he is an nba ready defender and i saw that against Giannis. I, Giannis had one of his worst games of the season in this game and no Jabari Smith Jr. was known him for every single minute of the game that, that Giannis was out there but when it mattered the most in majority of those minutes Jabari Smith Jr. was the primary defender and I've seen it a few times on this season where obviously he's playing on one of the youngest teams of basketball if not the youngest team of basketball they're never going to be no there's no team at this age that's going to be a good defensive team so as a collective they're going to look bad defensively but if you key in on Jabari Smith Jr. as an individual defender you see the flashes you see why people said he is going to be able to defend no matter what if even if the jump shot isn't falling and this we play 35 minutes and it's not just because he was the former three number three overall pick it's because his defense was so good that steven silas kept him out there even though the shot wasn't falling and the most exciting news for me as an outsider of the houston rockets fandom is that it seems like eric gordon is finally going get, to get traded shams put out a report today that there's a potential three-team deal that, that uh, dealt with the phoenix suns and boom 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 maybe kenya mark jr is a part of it and i'm just excited about that because well am i excited about yeah i'm gonna say i'm excited about this mostly because it opens up more minutes for some of the younger dudes i do believe that a team like the houston rockets we made a video about culture earlier in the season do need like legitimate 
um, like culture setters slash veterans in the locker room. But every time I watch Eric Gordon play, I feel like he's just taking minutes away from somebody that could be developing. You can argue, Kenny, the guy that's developing need to win those minutes. And I can agree with that to some extent. Um, but the fact that he's going to get traded, at least it seems like it, is pretty solid. The Spurs are on a three-game win streak. Just occasionally, they're going to they go on win streaks. After an 11-game losing streak, three-game win streak right now including a game that they wanted to give away. Oh, my God, they wanted to give away that game against the Cavs tonight. They were up by, like, 10 points going to the fourth or whatever it, may, whatever it was. They had some offensive fouls. Zach Collins all over the place. He fouls out, and Kelton got a big old block down the stretch, but they ended up winning against the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are one of the more confusing teams in basketball right now, but a three-game win streak nonetheless. And with this being basically the first year of a Spurs tank, like, seriously, I mean, you can argue that last year might have been the tank job, but they did have DeJounte Murray, who was an all-star player. Um, I, I think that they just, <laughs> look at me, I'm trying to rig the lottery already. I think they deserve to get a high pick because the entirety of me being an NBA fan, the Spurs have won their championships the right way. Yes, right before I became a Spurs fan, not a Spurs fan, an NBA fan, uh, they they did a fake take or they they don't want to tell you that they tanked, but they tanked to end up getting Tim Duncan and obviously that set their franchise up. But every single season, even the season where they weren't good, they always found a way to reformulate, retool to get to that championship contention. And with the San Antonio Spurs being the market that they are, the draft is extremely important, like a lot of these bottom feeder teams right now. And them getting a top pick would be crucial. Um, I don't want to say the word missed on draft picks because, again, a lot of these guys on this roster are still super young, but they haven't hit to an extent where you feel like that guy is 1,000% a building block for the future. Keldon's really good. The Denver sale. And these, these guys have the conversation right now, but I can't say with 100% certainty that once the Spurs are back good, that Keldon and Devin will be part of that. And I think this draft class could potentially give you one of those dudes. I guess the Washington Wizards are low-key in this conversation now. We made a video about mediocrity last week, and they're on a seven-game losing streak, and they're talking about Kyle Kuz potentially getting traded to a bigger market or a team that'll get him some money. So, man, I, I, we, we talked about the Wizards last week, so I don't want to go too much in depth, but are they in the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes? As of right now, they're sitting at 11-17, and the difference between them and the Orlando Magic is about three games, and the way they're skidding right now, that three games, uh, not that much with all this time left in basketball. And then we got the OKC Thunder, who are also on a three-game losing streak at the moment. Shea has still been unreal. Um, even tonight against Luka, the Shea versus Luka um, game was really, really fun. Of course, Luka ended up winning, but Shea setting his career high or tying his career high is always really cool. They have a, a couple people on this roster outside, of course, like Shea and Josh Giddy that I really like, like Jalen Williams, the one, um, not the big, but the wing player. He has a, I hate when people say this, but it's, it's, a, it's true. He has a very good feel for the game when I watch it. Like he doesn't excel at anything. But he has a good feel and he's pretty solid at a lot of different stuff. And I think feel is one of the most important things um, when it comes to, to drafting, especially for a team like OKC. Because with them having as many picks as they do, they can draft with a couple of different formulas. They can draft a guy that's 100% potential. They can draft a guy that's league ready and also draft a guy that's just have the feel in all one draft class because they have seven picks or whatever it may be. Um, and, and I think out of the Western Conference, those are all of the teams that have committed to the tank as of right now. Um, the Lakers are still trying to win basketball games. The Minnesota Timbers are trying. Uh, without Cat, it's rough. And with Cat, it was rough. Uh, the Jazz are still trying, even though they're 3-7 and seven in the last 10. I do believe that they might end up in the sweepstakes, but they are so much ahead of everybody else that it might be rough for them to get to that top three spot. But they they're might end up there. But everybody above them feel like they're going to be out there trying to win uh, basketball games. And now East... I mean, Indiana Pacers are kind of skidding a little bit, you know, three and seven, but still a 500 team at the moment. My boy Tyrese had one point today, which is insane. Like, like one point off a technical free throw. I was, I was so surprised. I, that game in general was a weird one versus the Miami Heat where, what was it, 80 something to 80 something, like, like it was 2003. But I can see a world where things flop a little bit. Um, Benedict Matherin is cooling down, an underrated story so far because he was so hot to start the season. And he's not bad or anything, but if you look at his shooting splits over the last, I want to say, two, three weeks, he's shooting like 10% from three. Uh, so those shots that he was taking and making earlier, they're just not falling right now. Um, and with them skidding, if you want to call it that, wouldn't be surprised if they were one of the teams to sell. Quickly, let's talk about some of the games from today. Um, the the Brooklyn Nets are probably going to get their own video from me very, very soon because they continue to, to do some good things. Again, it was against the Wizards, who we just mentioned, haven't been very good recently. Uh, but Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving were stellar. The Hawks were missing DeJounte and Trey Young, and the Grizzlies were missing Bane and Ja. If I bought tickets to this game, I'd be upset until I got there. 
because I'm, I'm i'm a believer um that all of that goes away once you actually watch a basketball unless you paid specifically to see ja or you play paid specifically to see trey young um this game ended up being an eye. i mean it was more more of a blowout than what the final score says which was a 25 point game but i do love the fact that jaron jackson jr ended up with eight blocks eight blocks seven rebounds 15 points he was in, in, insane today um aj griffin is one of my favorite rookies in this class so i like watching him play even though he hit a game winner against my bulls like last night it sucked but hey things happen two tip game winners in his young nba career um he 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 just is good I was trying to say it in, in a different way. He's just good. And obviously, people knew that. Um, him coming out of high school, having all those injuries, they were afraid about his, his injury history and everything. But it was strictly based off talent. The, the brother should have been drafted a lot earlier than that. And though today he didn't have an, a, an amazing game, um, I, there, there's a lot of good things to take away from AJ Griffin as a draft pick. Damian Lillard hit a 11 three-pointers. 11 for 17. And the, the worst part about it all, so he, only played, he only played 29 minutes because the Minnesota team was, couldn't keep it close. I mean, when you're giving up 11 three-pointers to one singular player, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be hard to stay in that game. And they got outshot from three by 11. So that's that's a 33-point differential between the three-point shots. So, yeah, uh, ended up being a blowout. But, but, boy, I just wanted to see more. I, I want to see records broken, ladies and gentlemen. And, unfortunately, records will not be broken if the game can't stay close. So, Mr. Chris Finch, Rudy Gobert, and, and, and all the others got to be better gotta be better make this game more more complete and day might have ended up with 15 in the things i don't know he had eight in the first first half bro he had eight in the first half um and he was he was really good and lastly Kawhi leonard had his uh, season high game against the boston celtics they went by 20 he ended up with 25 points on 83 percent shooting uh nine rebounds six assists undoubtedly the best game we've seen for him this season and it was it was a good one Clipper Nation, again, I'm not going to overreact, but you did just beat the best team in basketball, the team that had been dogging teams around the league, and you beat them, beat the brakes off of them. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm watching. I'm tuned in, Clipper Nation. You know, we're going to give us some more games of these boys playing together before we make our initial and final react. Not final because there's a lot of basketball left, but some reactions um, to what they got going on. Speaking of tank off, tomorrow we got Pistons versus Hornets for all of the lottery odds. It's, it's an important game. Um, if, you, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, and I'll see y'all soon.